Welcome to this episode of Bring It On. I'm Bob Hayes, and I'm going to be your host for today's show. I have two people. This is part two of a three or a four-part episode. We're not really sure how many we're going to have, but we're on part number two, and it's educational purposes about the cultivation of marijuana in the town of Hanson in the industrial park. I have two guests here today that are the people that are trying to do it. Ralph and Allie Greenberg, am I correct? Yes. Ralph. Nice to meet you. Allie. Bob, Pleasure. thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having us. I'm doing this, I already did the people that were for it, and I'm doing it for an educational purpose so it can help some of the people know what's going on, what your plans are, what your thoughts are. I understand you're doing some outreach stuff. And right out of the gate, if you can just tell me a little bit about yourself briefly, because this half hour is going to fly by. And then we'll talk a smidge about the outreach, because there was some confusion about who should have been running the ads and that, that it was sort of a scam was some of the talk that was used. And I know it wasn't. It was put in the legal. So I'd like to put some of that to rest mm -hmm. so people know what's going on. Ralph, take, give, me a, give me the skinny. I'm 57 years old. I'm a father of three wonderful children. Uh, my background is used lab and scientific equipment. Uh, I was a refurbisher of high-tech scientific equipment for most of my career. Uh, for the last 20 years, I was in the scrap metal and recycling business. A lot of the surplus technology that I had acquired came scrap metal from those, uh, those deals. So I started a scrap metal business and uh, lasted about 15 years. And, uh, local? Local, the uh, town of Avon, candidly. So we were local, had a nice little business practice. and. Uh, Today, we're looking to uh, cultivate cannabis in the town of Hanson. Allie and I do share a nonprofit organization called Keep a Hope. Our goal is to help eradicate hunger in the community by the recycling of unwanted house keys and car keys. So we do a community involvement program with keys in the classroom, keys anywhere. I know you're in the automobile business is what we chatted. Yes. And a lot of surplus keys from different automobile dealers and stuff. So all of those proceeds from the ultimate scrap metal go to a local food pantry. So that's... That's me, and that's what I do. <laughs> Allie, he sounds fairly interesting. Uh, Give yes. us your skinny. It's hard to keep up with this guy. Yeah. Um, 28, uh, live in Pembroke. Uh, my experience with cannabis started with NETA, New England Treatment Access. They have a vertically integrated company, medically driven, just switched over to REC. But I started in 2016 with them. Um, I was considered a PSA where I would be recommending the uh, product to the patient coming into our facility. Okay. Um, started there with two years off my belt and really just wanted to maybe figure out and navigate uh, a new uh, way of thinking with this cannabis business opportunity we both have. Okay. So it looks like you, you've, you've taken for a step. Let's talk a little bit about the first part of it. There was a lot of talk in Hanson about it was a little blurb in a newspaper and that selectmen should have been involved. And it, it's sort of an outreach thing. And that's one of the reasons we, we, we're doing some of these shows here at Whitman Hanson Community Access is to give people some education about what really happened. So some of the, the talk was that the town should have been notifying the people. I even said on the last show it might be a good idea maybe, and, and I don't know exactly what, how far involved your outreach might be but it mm -hmm. might even be good to send a postcard out to yeah. give people yes. give people the real skinny on what's going on because there's a lot of drama and there's a lot of talk and they, when you get talk people stop making their own versions and our aim here is to hope to get a true story out whether it's pros yeah. cons against for or the grower sure. we want people to be educated whether it happens or it doesn't we want it's everybody important. to have a fair shot. So. Yeah, so I guess just thank you for having us on the show. And, oh, you're welcome. You know, Thanks for coming. We want people to know. The transparency behi behind our business is really what we're trying to do. So this does not count as a community outreach. Um, the CCC who regulates um, applicants coming to the state. Um, Can you stop for just one second? I hate to interrupt you. Tell me. The CCC is the who? The Cannabis Control Commission. Okay, just because yeah, people no, don't know. I'm I'm on a school committee, and lots of times we talk about things and we're way over the head. Totally. So try to keep that sure. with us. Absolutely. Because I don't know, and I want to know too. Yeah, yeah. So going back to how we notify the town and the residents, um, there's a step process that we have to go through per license. So for this cultivation license, we have to notify through a newsletter seven days in advance to when we actually have the appearance of when we can publicly speak. So once we do that, we also have to send our butters um, a seven day 
prior to um, our event, um, our public outreach meeting, and then on top of that, we have to notify like the town clerks, and that's the process that we have to go through. This right here is just informative. We wanted to be on your show. We're thankful that we can really kind of break stigmas and be as transparent about what we're trying to do in your town. So, to be very clear about this, mm -hmm. it's not the town's problem to notify everyone, it's, it's yours. It's ours, yes. Okay, because the town was getting a little bit of the blame of not notifying the people. Mm -hmm. How many times do you think you're going to have outreaches so people can, because I know there's a lot of Q&A, and at the end of my show I put my numbers out and I put my email out and I did get some stuff on yep. my phone. It's six per license that we have to do, so six outreach meetings. Okay, talking about license, let's talk about the regulation part of the license. It seems it seems like there's a also some questions about that. How regulated is a, the Cannabis Control Commission with what your business does? They're armored. I mean, it's taken us two years just to even try and find a town that's receptive. And it's really because I found that the CCC has done a really good job by um, regulate and how we come into their towns and I really thoroughly believe that um, we're just so pleased to be in the town of Hanson because how supportive they are um, but that really stepped up from the state providing these regulations and providing what we have to do as a you know an applicant coming to your town did that answer your question yeah yeah it does it does I mean because um, a lot of people are saying the same thing why Hanson why not other towns and, oh. and some of the people say like uh, Joe and Patrick that were on the last show that mm -hmm. are for it mm -hmm. are saying we want it in Hanson because we want the revenue so now that I've used that word revenue let's well, take a shot at let's, let's go take back, back on, the, on the why Hanson yeah it's a great little town first of all mm -hmm. I mean Ali and I we come from the South Shore we come from Stoughton originally so we've traveled this community quite a bit uh, wanting to be closer to where we're going to be working just based on our access to the, mm -hmm. the seasonal uh, business and all that jazz that we have with the weather to get back and forth closer. And you live in Pembroke, correct? We live in Pembroke, okay. so it's closer for us. So it's important for us to see the needs of a community, first of all. The, the town definitely could use the revenue, getting on to the next portion of this is the revenue, but knowing that this is a nice little town that could use some, some, um, some positive impact with our business model in the community. Mm -hmm. And our business is a model that can make some revenue. If it's done properly, it's a, it's a nice revenue stream for the, for, the, for the business and for the community based on our community host agreement. And there's a portion of the proceeds that have to go back to the community. Is so it 3%? Is that, 3 is that correct? 3% yes. of the gross yes. number? Yes. yes, of the gross So, sale. Joe, I know, had a little missed up on the last 300, show. 300,000. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking a million, and, he, and, and we get into the 3%, and he said 300,000. I felt okay. so bad. I'm thankful can, that can, you corrected him. Well, I, a lot of people may not have saw that correction. Yeah, so. no, it was fine, and Joe, Joe's a great guy. Um, location, Hanson Industrial Park, down on Franklin Street, right across from the right that goes into East Bridgewater. I'm pretty yep. sure a lot yep. of people. Yeah, yeah. Halfway between the dump, uh, the transfer station, I'm sorry, Yep. and the corner of Route 14. It's about halfway down. Sure. Is the building that you're talking about, are you building it? Is it coexisting? It's a current building. It's, it's currently a, there. It's in commercial way. It's a New England Villages is currently the occupant of is the facility. Is that the right first building on the right? This building on the left, left as you drive in. Uh, okay. Yep, it's the brown now, uh, steel structured building. We talk, It's a steel building and, yep. and they talked about, and again, I know nothing about it, so I'm asking for you to educate me also. It's a grow facility inside of a building? Yes. So w what this building will be is a building inside of the building based on the quality of cannabis that our facility will be growing and the types of product that needs to come out of there. You want a clean environment. You almost want a biotechnology type uh, medical facility. It's going to be a sealed building uh, based on our temperature and our climates in New England. We want to have an insulated building inside of our building. So it's almost going to be considered like a cold storage facility in there, sealed to keep the temperatures correct. I mean, you want to have a wonderful temperature at all times, you know, continued temperature. Uh, humidity and CO2 has to be added for the, for the plant, so there are certain things that you need to have sealed. And um, so the, the building in yeah. the building. Yeah, the environmental controls is our huge component to just keep the, the process going. So that's one of the biggest things that is our concern to make sure that we build the proper building. Okay. So the outside skin of the building is going to remain Completely exactly discreet. what it is. Yep. Yep. 
and then there's going to be another <coughs> building inside. He's, so like he's a, I call it a building he in a building. It like that. It's an insulated facility that's going to be within the building to make sure that everything is compartmentalized based on the steps of the process of the grove from, of course, tissue culture all the way up to the, uh, the, the, flowering, the flowering stages. Yep. Okay. And again, I have no knowledge about We're going to keep continuing to educate you as much as we I can in the audience, part. of course. People are talking about smell. Mm -hmm. Does does growing marijuana, does it smell? Oh, my God. It should smell There's wonderful. An odor. Oh, it, should, it should smell wonderful. However, are we going to smell it? Not from our building. No. We're going to prevent that with our HVAC, state-of-the-art HVAC system that we'll implement right from the start. So we won't have any odors escape in that building. And what's exciting, just to say and to the viewers, of course, with these uh, concerns about the odor, State-of-the-art technology is coming to this facility, these facilities in these cannabis grow companies rather rapidly. We're all trying to find the best way to mitigate that smell, that concern for the community as you drive by to have any. We're not going to have that issue on our facility. We're going to be, by the time we have this built and finalize all of our build-outs, different technology has been coming out. You know, uh, new oxidization programs that, you know, will do ionic uh, disbursements and things so it's a whole new technology we have to get into that today but we'd love to chat with more people about this as we go forward and the okay. agricultural practices has advanced completely so, so for us we're trying to stay on top of that as much as we can because the industry evolves so much so fast and we're at the beginning stages of just the process yeah, trying to get our license this sounds like a rather expensive undertaking approximately again ladies and gentlemen you can't nail them to a figure because every building and build out's different. Sure. I've been mm -hmm. down that road sure. before mm -hmm. with other types of build outs. Is it a million dollar investment? Oh, it's more than that. It, it's a That's several million asking. dollar acquisition here to facilitate this program. And don't forget, it's a seed that has to be grown to a flower and a plant. There's time here. I mean, nothing is walking. We're not walking into a facility and, and picking and peeling and, and selling it to uh, you know, our wholesale community. This is a time-consuming process, and you have to do it properly. Well, that was my next thing. Like, do you buy the plants pre-grown? Like, I just planted a garden at my house, mm -hmm. and I go buy everything. Sure, of course. About this big. Get I a little starter kit, sure. I hit it with the water. I hit it with a little fertilizer. Up it comes, right? Yep, have some tomatoes. You guys Cult grow it from Cultivars, seed? genetics, they can come from two different sources, the seeds or the clones. Um, we'll start from seed, and uh, we'll grow it all the way up through flower, and then we'll process that so people can consume it. Through flower, again, is it look, look? The buds, you know, buds. Uh, it's a buddable scenario. I mean, you, you know, the okay. plant buds and the buds become the flower that you either consume, uh, you know, smoking wise, or you make extracts and different types of edibles with it. Okay. All right. That makes a little bit more sense mm -hmm. to me. Now, this is a wholesale facility only. Am I correct yes, in saying that? Yep. Yes. No one will be allowed in this building. Only Correct. employees. Other, other, other than employees. employees. Licensed employees. Talk about employees. I have about 10 to 15 employees. Um, we're, at, or we're at the very beginning stages, Bob. I mean, we've kind of came at this at a different angle where we don't have the team. We are the team. Um, so organically, I would love for someone. I am looking for a grower, and I just like to say that out loud. I am looking for people that want to support this business with us. Local people um, with an opportunity for us as well. And that's why I'm so thankful that we can be on the show because it is advocating for our own company too. And if we do share the same um, passion for the plant, I would love to know who you are. Um, this is what it's all about. I'm stepping up to make an opportunity for all of us. Never mind an opportunity for the both of us. This is huge for our family. Yeah, we're creative, we're thoughtful, and we're interested in the community and everything that we're doing here. Okay. And to give back is a real big uh, value that Allie and I have uh, shared. Well, but with, so years. just going back to your first question, sorry, with our 10K facility, 10,000 square feet, we do expect to use maybe about 10 to 15 employees per day. Per day, seven days a week? Yep. Because yep. you have to, I mean, is it, it's like, I, like I said, days, I plant in a garden. Up. I water it every so often, about once a month I weed it. Yeah. A little bit different facility. A little bit more I'm, maintenance. Yeah, for you guys it's yeah, more yeah. Absolutely. Um, um, it will be automated, however, um, you know, these plants can be fussy, so we would like to have people on staff at all times. There's nothing like, someone said to me, oh, they're going to put um, roof lights, roof 
skylight type things no. in the day no. to bring in natural sunlight. No greenhouse, none yeah, of that. Greenhouse effects out there that people that wouldn't be economically feasible. But not for, for our business model. That. No, not no. our model. So it's all done interior, interior. sealed up with sealed. lights. Yep. Um, like we'll I said, a building LEDs. in a building, LED lighting. Okay. It's the most future sustainable practice that we could help with our whole facility is is using LEDs as opposed to HPSs. High yeah. pressure sodium, which is a much stronger light, which is not, not as economically. It's uh, not economical yeah, at all. Not I've done a few build outs on just commercial buildings oh, yeah. in, in digital. Yeah, is, is the only Same way. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, state of the art okay. going forward. Um, concerns, water usage, is that a big, big does it take tons of water oh, like yeah, takes, a regular takes, garden? Yes, of course it does. It's a mm -hmm. very big water consuming, as a plant of course, we have to water yeah, our yeah. plants on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. The good thing about us is we're gonna try to eliminate a lot of our, uh, our waste, try to recycling house. Um, if there is any waste, of course, there is uh, many separation devices and reverse osmosis and DI to be able to you know, get that water down the drain or use it on our own property for um, our own our own gardening and our own. We were just talking over coffee today. We're putting tens of thousands of dollars into our water to feed our plants. We're not wasting that. That's just not going down the drain. The drain, you know. And never mind if it doesn't go in the plant. We have a plan to recollect it and reuse it. And the okay. good thing is, is this small footprint of a building. And I think there was a couple of questions that I heard before. Is this wonderful little piece of property, whatever gallonage it uses, is going to be much more um, conducive than a large uh, multi-tenant facility that has discharge and, and many other things uh, that won't go right that way. Other than us, we're going to be giving money back to the community as well with our business. And you know, it's a host agreement. Everybody should have, I always say to people, everybody should have a host agreement in life. You know, everybody, if you're making a living, you should give back to something in a town that you're either living in or you're working at. It's important for me. Hunger, addiction, many, many different things are very important to us as a community. And, a and I do just want to add on top of the HCA, the host community agreement, it's not just the 3%. There's the positive impact plan. You know, there's a social economic empowerment group that we are totally thinking of. There's the social equity group that is in our forefront. These are, these are demographics that the CCC, the Cannabis Commission, put in place for us to help, assist. Um, and it's something that we will do. Okay, we talk about a host agreement. The host agreement, I would assume, and again, I'm making assumptions. Hate to keep saying, but I mm -hmm. don't know tons about it. The host agreement probably would be set up between your business plan and the board of selectmen. The selectmen might, they could put regulations over and above what the Cannabis Control Commission puts on you for licensing. And I'm sure that there must be some type of the state must come out at some point and watch over what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so let's talk, a little, let's talk a little bit about that. Okay, so the, the process of the HCA is definitely with the town itself. So we have to negotiate that contract and agreement. Um, we're in that agreement as we speak. We're negotiating with both our lawyers. And um, we haven't come to an agreement yet. However, that will be public publicly documented. Yes. And the CCC has to approve it. Um, once that's approved, we can start going through our whole build-out process. So this is for us as a, as a team, that's our biggest milestone, is to get this community involved, get, that, get them approved, and to really get the HCA on board. Okay, I think part of, part of what I've seen and what I've read, and again, I'm doing this to try to get some questions answered. If a host agreement between the Cannabis Control Commission mm -hmm and the Board of Selectmen, along with the, the police department. If the host agreement, one of the big things was, well, once they get licensed, they'll do whatever they want. No. And a lot of people on both sides were saying, some were saying, yeah, they will, and other people were saying, uh-uh, it's, it's state. Mm. I mean, my thought process would be, if you invest millions of dollars in a, in a building facility and you start breaking the rules, and they can take the license. Mm, that it's almost like going to a phase four trial of a drug. You have to do everything specific, crossing and dotting T's and I's. This is a very important thing for the state and the town 
to understand our interest in this type of a business model. Mm -hmm. Failure is not part of our option here. We have a five-year commitment with the HCA attached to this establishment anyway. The host community agreement. Yes. yes, and we would love if it was, you know, in five years, let's talk about it again. Sure. Who knows how we're going to be doing. Giving you is know? important, and the community that we're making a business and a model is going to be very, very well, interesting. We're in running idea, on, so if I'm pushing you a little bit, I, I apologize up front because I'm trying to get everything in that, um, people are worried, that there's, there's some worried about security and extra police and break-ins because people that smoke weed, so to speak, just being right outright, mm -hmm. not, not, I mean, there's, there's other ways as before the show you were telling me they make it into different, different types of things, gummy bears or brownies or whatever. Um, people are worried about extra security, whatever, whatever, um, revenue we might get from what you generate, we might spend on extra police. Talk about the security plan with the chief of police. And then. So the security plan that we have to, uh, to develop with the CCC has already got their own plan. So we have to follow that plan. It is more strict than your own town's police department plan. Our cameras have to be quicker. Our security plan has to be to a point that has to be A, approved by the CCC, the Cannabis Control Commission, and by our local uh, police chief and, and, and his staff, and the people that are doing this for us, the, uh, the electronics company that will be handling this, have done several of these. So we're very, very knowledgeable of what needs to be done to make sure that there's no break-in and there's no issues of people even knowing that there's a cannabis facility there with signage and all of that. Um, Okay. All right. That's pretty upfront. I mean, I, I'm sure it needs to be twisted and tweaked. Shipping it. It's not getting processed on industrial bull. I, I, stop me if I'm being, at the is being processed. At the <laughs> moment, we're not going for that manufacturing license. We're just going for the cultivation. But it has However, to be still processed which cultivation as a means we just grow it, it, cut it, or whatever yes, you do yep, with it, put exactly. it in a bag, and ship it to a processing exactly. plant. Exactly. Yes. That's what happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that must be in some sort of a secure truck, a trucking company. Yep. Uh, several companies in the state of Massachusetts that, handle it. that will handle it, almost like a, an armed guard service. Okay. Um, an okay. ex-group of, I think, uh, uh, Navy SEALs and detectives and whatever have got built their business, and uh, they're going to be their, uh, the cannabis moving company. And every vehicle transport transporter does have a tracking device, so that tracking device can be synced up to um, the police department. It's okay. synced up to the CCC, so they know exactly Every plant that's being, you know, that's leaving your building is being tracked. Even grown is tracked. Exactly. Everything it's called it's called metrics. It's a barcode. Yeah. I know what it using. means. Yep. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Um, okay. No consumption on the site. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, a very. There clean. must be there must be strict rules about consumption, employee, you know, because that that was what somebody else. And I'm going on questions that I had. I'm not trying to be a no, jerk. I'm trying to be informative. Somebody said, well, the employees will be smoking it at lunchtime. And I said, I Not on our property and not in our facility. I can't see how that would not be. Not on our property it's kind of like a package store. Exactly. Or, you know. Of course. You have to be cognizant of what the rules and regulations are. Traveling with it or smoking in a vehicle or anything in a public property. You have to be very cognizant of that. And that's something that we will not stand for, candidly. Another, another question was, there's a fertiliz is, is there a fertilization type process and where does that go. Obviously, you, you, you've said you reclaim the water and someone else said, well, they'll be dumping fertilization stuff into the thing and there's an mm -hmm. aquifer for the town. Not too far from there. Not far mm -hmm. from, from um, that industrial park somewhere in the woods. And again, I don't can't tell you exactly where it is. I know that uh, based on, you know, waste and, and environmental concerns that I have as a, a business owner and I would have as a, uh, a resident of the community, we will handle everything according to state and federal regulations. There's some wonderful deionization and reverse, reverse osmosis processes, oil water separation systems will take any, you know, hard or, or byproducts out of the water and we can recycle like Ali said earlier. We want to use as much water that we can, that we're uh, that we're taking from the from the system for sure, and recycle it internally. And if it does go back out into the stream, there's going to be clean water. So there's regulations on that, oh, is, sure. is what I'm asking. Yeah, and when it comes to actually consuming the product, our state, Massachusetts, has the most strictest standards when it comes to our testing. So the the analytics behind it, when it comes to the heavy metals, 
or maybe pesticides that you've been using, if you fail, you will not be selling that product to any of us. Right. So for us, we have to follow a huge process from start to finish, never mind that, that second phase when we actually get it tested. And that's where we need the best of the best growers and the most effective and... Um, Proper ingredients and the nutrients that. that we use are gonna be, uh, you know, uh, So there's organic. a testing process. Oh yeah. Along Every, the way. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like you, you have to meet certain. There's certain labs. Um, I'll just MCR Proverdi, where once we uh, finalize our flowering, we will have to send in a sample to see potency, everything, mold, cannabinoids, mildew, spores. If God forbid, there's ever like that in there. Oh yeah, I never really thought about it's mold a flower. and you gotta mildew. Be and your somebody flower, did course. mention that to me that mold and mildew I I is an issue. And I'm fortunate, I came from the medical side of it. Once once medical hit in 2016, and I was part of probably the biggest movement in NETA, um, that's my biggest thing. I want the cleanest product. I need the consumers to have that clean, safe access to what we want to bring for Impressed. And Allie and I will be traveling around the country, maybe th certain parts of the world, to facilitate some of the things that we're talking about. The proper lighting, the proper HVAC systems. There's a lot of wonderful things that we'll be you know, uh, visiting to find out the best that we can do for ourselves. So there are other grow facilities already. Oh yeah, already there's out. about. Like nobody's growing it outside, cutting it down and bringing it in and selling it wholesale. Not, not in, not, not in not this licensed. market, no. Not if you're not licensed. I mean, there's underground business, but there's a whole. No, I, I understand yeah. that. There's plenty of underground business is going back into the 60s. We <laughs> were just, uh, we opened, it's called the portal with the Cannabis Control Commission, how you have to submit your application. And there's a lease thousands of applicants in there. So yeah. we're not the only one coming to town. Right now in Hanson, we're the only one coming, but surrounding other towns, there's gonna be multiple Yeah, there's many cultivation facilities, many uh, In Massachusetts, oh, up yeah. and running right yes. now. Oh, so yeah. there's something that I could possibly go and maybe get a tour of. Mm. You can't tour the cultivation facility, but you could definitely tour the front of the edible shop or where they'd be selling their products. Nobody lets you in the back of the house, unless you've in our facility, you're going to have to be carded yeah. with special access, and the CCC, the Cannabis Control Commission, will know who's in our building yeah, as at all a visitor. times. As mm -hmm. a visitor or as, I mean, we'd love yeah. to have you in on the pre-walkthrough yeah. to see what we're doing, and we invite, you know, anybody that so will come So it sounds through. fairly secure. Well, we've really come down to, I'd say we are probably got about a minute and a half to two minutes. Uh, if either one of you would like to speak directly about this product, that camera Love over that. there is where you'd look and leave me about a minute. So I I'll say be going like this. Thank you to the town of Hanson, uh, the community, the welcoming to us. We're, like I said earlier, we're interesting people. We care. Our goal in life is to build a business and a product that we can share with not only the patients that need it, but the consumers that utilize this product for the benefits that it has. So thank you for the opportunity, and hopefully the impressed uh, cannabis cultivation will be in your town soon. Pretty good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the quickest half hour, and I think I got a little bit more education on uh, cultivation of marijuana or uh, whatever, or cannabis. And this is part two of a series. We're going to have uh, some other peat pot, two of three. We're going to have another one uh, so stay tuned to bring it on because we're trying to give you the best education that we can get from the people for, the people against, and the people who are trying to grow it. So don't go anywhere. We will be back, and hopefully this has been informative to you. If you need to contact me, Bob H., four, Bob Hayes, 4433 at gmail.com, or you can call me on my cell phone at 617-538-0189. Stay tuned, we'll be back for another interesting Bring It On. <music>